Hello. Well, today I'm continuing with the uh, fifth uh, installment in the Friday the 13th franchise, and uh, <clears throat> that would be Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. Um, this movie I'm actually not that big of a fan of, um, and I don't, know, I don't want to talk about the overall plot, um, though I guess spoilers will happen, <clears throat> just like in all these, talk about certain plot points and certain deaths, but a, a, a reason is, um, is it just that, you know, uh, in this film, Jason isn't the, you know, main killer, you know, he wasn't the, you know, the killer in the first film, and that's, you know, obviously a really good movie. It's an excellent film in its own right. And I think the sequels follow up, but particularly the first three, help elevate that movie to the classic level that it's at right now. Um, I will say with this film, there are ideas that I like. <clears throat> You know, it's interesting that, you know, Tommy Jarvis, years later, you know, and this is basically the second installment in the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. You know, the final chapter, you know, part four was the first one, part five is the second, and then, the, of course, um, <clears throat> part six is the last film um, of that trilogy, uh, of sorts, with Tommy Jarvis as a central character. And, um... Yeah, with this film, um, well, I'll show you this, the, bet, the uh, alternate uh, cover poster. Jason still haunts you. You're not alone. Friday the 13th, part 5, the final chapter. Of course, the back is also different. Um, and uh, this is actually the first actual kill in the film. I mean, there are actually there are two people who die before that guy, which was done by Jason in a uh, dream or nightmare sequence at the very beginning of the film, where we see Corey Feldman. Um. You know, that's the only scene Corey Feldman is in the film. Uh, and the reason is because, you know, originally they wanted him to be the lead in this film, but he was too busy with making Goonies at the time, so he wasn't able to uh, do the film as the main character. Um, but they filmed on a Sunday uh, the opening sequence of Corey Feldman walking uh, like through the woods finding Jason's grave and uh, uh, you know that he, he sees it and then he runs back because two guys are coming and uh, they basically are digging up his grave. I guess you could call them grave robbers, but from the dialogue, it seems like they just really want to see Jason's dead body. Not steal it or anything, they just want to... Uh, just look at it. Don't, don't want to steal his hockey mask or anything, which he's wearing. Um, anyway, they dig up his body. Jason comes back to life, kills those guys, which, as established, it's a dream sequence, nightmare, so those guys don't really exist, um, so they're killed, Jason gets out of the grave, comes over towards where Tommy is and goes to kill him, but then he wakes up, and uh, he's an adult, uh, Jason is played by John Shepard, John Shepard does a very good job, but he doesn't have a lot of dialogue, a lot of his acting comes from his uh, facial 
expressions of body language. And he does a very good job. Um, yeah. Now, this film is actually quite uh, polarizing to a degree because um, there are people who really love it. There are people who really dislike it. You know, I'm not a big fan of it, but um, you know, as I've watched these movies over and over um, in marathon form, I find I like like certain films in this series a bit more. Um, not necessarily with each viewing, but as a certain number of viewings go on, I sort of enjoy certain things, and again, I think there are some good ideas. A big thing is, again, you know, you see Tommy having visions of Jason after the nightmare, and he's in a halfway house called, at a place like a Pinehurst uh, near Crystal Lake, and so, you know, uh, they, uh, you know, they're near where Jason Voorhees went around killing people as well as his mother. Um, which, you know, you might think that's not a very good place for somebody who is now traumatized from experiencing a lot of death and killing Jason in the previous film. You know, it's not necessarily great because, you know, Tommy, you know, just killed Jason and it was quite brutal. Um, but, you know, he has problems, which is understandable. We don't know what happened to his sister Trish, at least in terms of their relationship. You can assume they're strange strained and uh yeah they yeah she's not in this film um of course their mother was killed in the f fourth film you don't see her death but uh yeah it's you know that happened off screen and a and yeah um There are some characters I do like, um, uh, aside from Tommy, uh, there's Reggie Shafar Ross, he's very good, um, uh, you know, he's, he's a very interesting character, charismatic, uh, he's actually able to get Tommy to sort of smile for the first time, he plays a practical joke on Tommy early in the film. And then Tommy wears one of his masks and scares him, but then he takes it off and, you know, kind of, they have a bit of a bond. Um, Melanie Kinneman is uh, Pam, one of the people at this halfway house who's helping uh, other kids that are um, uh, sort of... Uh, help readjust and get them back into the world. Um, uh, Damon, uh, played by Miguel Nunez Jr., he's uh, uh, Reggie, his, his brother, and uh, there's Sheriff Tucker, played by Marco St. John. Um, the latter two characters, we don't see a whole lot of them, unfortunately, and I think there's some there could have been something interesting. And I think one problem with this uh, film, for me, is there are, there are various characters that we don't really know a whole lot. We don't get to spend too much time with them. And so, there's a lot of people who get killed, you know, and, and some characters, you know, there's Jake, he, who has a stutter, and he's... I kind of feel bad for him. Like, he... says to the girl, he likes her, she just kind of laughs, and then he says he's kidding, then he believes, and she feels bad, and then he's killed, which is unfortunate, and it's like, you know, there's things like that that happen, you know, characters aren't bad necessarily, it's just, you know, when they die, there's not enough time spent with them to really care, and I guess you could argue for certain characters in the previous four films, that was the case also, but I think the way those were executed um, in various ways, 
even if you didn't spend too much time with certain characters, there was something about them. Like, there was some charisma or something about the way they were written and played that you just, you know, you care about them enough to the point where you don't want them to die, basically. And unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case here, um, at least for me. Um, I know there are people who really love this film. You know, for some, it's their favorite in the entire franchise. It's their best movie. Uh, for some, I think this is a weaker entry, uh, but it does have some ideas that are interesting. You know, you know, there's like a red herring of, like at times, like it makes you wonder if Tommy is killing the various people in this film, and I think that's interesting. Uh, the payoff, though, you know, depending on your fond of the film, it's either good or bad. Um, spoiler, it's a paramedic named Roy, who is the father of the first uh, kid who got killed by somebody named Vic. He's cutting wood, he seems to have anger issues. You know, and Joey, he's just this, he's kind of a fat kid, he's like a fat kid who seems to be very happy and nice, he wants to do things, but he's just annoying everybody, basically, uh, and so, you know, he, he, he uh, ticks off the wrong guy with Vic, and is axed to death, and, you know, J uh, Roy is his father, so he arrives on the scene, okay, the other paramedic, they see him, and he's hacked up, and he's just very very disturbed and his uh, colleague is kind of making jokes that he doesn't take that very kindly um, and so you know he's uh, that angers him and he just starts going on of, of, of a rampage just killing people you know you know he does kill people at the halfway house, eventually, but, you know, he so, uh, kills, like, two guys whose car broke down, which, I guess, to sort of demonstrate, like, you know, the Jason's there, sort of like, you know, the legend of Jason Voorhees seems to be there, and so he's using that as a reason to help get away, I guess, with the, all these murders, uh, kills those two guys, um, and then at some point, you know, um, a mother and her son, you know, Ethel and Junior, who are, in my opinion, are very annoying characters to the point where it's like, you know, I wanted them to be killed off as soon as possible, and you have to wait near the end for that to happen, I'm like, that's just a shame. <laughs> I think, in terms of these characters, because I was a real big fan of them, personally. I know there are people who really love the Ethel character, and that's great, you know, that's cool. I think the way she was written is just too annoying to the point where my cat, you don't really care. You know, I don't... I don't really like her. I think it would have been better if she got killed off, as well as her son. Maybe have them get killed off early on because she's angry, you know, at the, um, the, uh, that, that there's two of the kids at the halfway house who got on her property and were having sex. You know, and if they were killed off early on, this could possibly, uh, maybe indicate that, you know, maybe somebody at the, uh, halfway house did it, you know. Perhaps people are pointing fingers, and maybe Tommy is one of them, because, you know, seems to be very quiet. Uh, he sort of keeps to himself, for the most part. And he's seen visions of Jason as we the audience sees, and so perhaps that could put it in your mind that maybe it's Tommy doing all this. Um, I mean, they do do that at times, uh, but, you know... Of course, by the end, you know that's not the case, but uh, I also think if they, uh, at 
certain points uh, laid off on Roy. Just had him be there as a background character that you can, perhaps upon uh, subsequent viewings, you pick up like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, well. And then when they kind of drop that he's Joey's uh, father, you know, that's a... That'd be, that'd be something that's interesting. Uh, now, uh, there are people who think that that reveal that he was Joey's father was very rushed and just uh, wasn't executed very well. And I, th I tend to agree with that. But then again, if, you know, with that sort of angle, if you're just going to have Roy be sort of a background character for the most part until, oh, he was really important this entire time. He wasn't just a paramedic. You know, that's just a, a shame, in my opinion. Um, uh, with Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Tucker, uh, he seemed to be a very interesting character. There's a conversation he has with the mayor, or saying like, "Who's like killing these people?" It's like he, sheriff says, "Oh, it's Jason Voorhees," because you know the killing, like the killing sort of matched the M.O. And he's saying, "Oh, he's dead. He was cremated," which, of course, by the next film we know that is not true, because Jason Voorhees comes back, um, and so. Then the sheriff says, Are you sure? Are you, were you there? Um, like, you know, that could have been just something that was said. Like, he was cremated, but they really just buried him. Um, so, <laughs> I think that's interesting to, uh, that's an interesting dialogue to have. Um, and with, uh, Damon, uh, Miguel Nunez, you know, he, he and his girlfriend get killed off. You know, we see a scene with him and Reggie, and that's a really cool scene. Kind of makes me wish we saw more of Damon, but he pretty much has, like, one pretty cool scene where he, Reggie visit, visits his brother for a little bit. And we see Reggie's grandpa there, and his grandpa seems like a nice guy. You know, we don't spend too much time with him, but, you know, from the interactions we see with him and Reggie and some of the others, he seems to be a very nice guy, and it's a real shame that Danny gets killed off. It's like, well, that's a real bummer. Um, and, um, Matt, uh, Matt Letter, uh, was a doctor, at the halfway place, and he, he's okay, but, you know, he's not an overly interesting character, in my opinion, um, you know, of course, he gets killed off, uh, the, some of these kills are off-screen, um, um, and, uh, you know, the, the, uh, I know I'm kind of going back and forth, but, you know, this film, it, it's interesting. You know, there are interesting things that going on. It's just the execution of some of these ideas uh, not being, in my opinion, not being executed the best. Um, Barney Cohen, uh, like one of the screenwriters for the final chapter, and the director, Joseph Zito, while they didn't... It, expect to ever make more uh, Friday the 13th films. They thought if they were ever going to make more films, maybe have like a Jason, a sort of like a, a germ of Jason, like a disease of sorts, that passes on to person to person. Like Tommy now has the disease of, of Jason of sorts. He's got that germ, and so that's why he's killing people. He sees visions of, you know, Jason 
Voorhees. Um, and then he's doing the killings, and then, you know, maybe by the end, you know, don't kill Tommy off, perhaps, but, you know, could pass it on to Reggie, and so on and so forth. Uh, constant sort of genes of Jason Voorhees may be dead permanently, but there's sort of like a germ disease of sorts of Jason that has now permeated you know, some of the people who experienced uh, Jason Voorhees like an encounter or somebody like them and you know, I think that would have been I, I think better, but you know that's also in hindsight you know, finding that out uh, later on um, you know, years later um, and after seeing the movie, I still think that would have been a better idea, but I think if these, uh, the ideas that are in this film were implemented differently and, uh, perhaps alluded more that it was Tommy, maybe have more hallucinations of sorts with Jason, you know, sometime before somebody is killed, I think that would have made it more interesting, and so when it's revealed that it's not Tommy, be interesting, like maybe he has some sort of like sense of sorts that somebody is going to die because of the connection he had with Jason and might have a feeling something bad is going to happen but he can't really explain it and if, if he tried to he might be uh, looked at as you know, being insane or crazy or perhaps the killer even when he's not. Um, so, you know, I don't know, there's all of these directions this film could have gone in, uh, but, you know, by the end of the film, they kill Roy, um, and, uh, find out his sort of background, and they have a nightmare <laughs> ending in that. Pam goes to um <clears throat> Pam goes to see Tommy in his room and he's there lying in the hospital bed because he got hurt, he got cut, and he also stabbed Roy with a pocket knife that he had and also helped knock uh, uh Roy into the Put his spikes off of a ledge and hacked at his hand, causing him to fall, and he is impaled on the spikes and dies. Um, you know, in the nightmare when she goes to visit him, he sees her, and then he like uncovers his blanket, and he has a knife, and he stabs her, and that was just a nightmare, and then he sees one more hallucination of Jason, and then he sort of confronts his fear, and then Jason goes away. Uh, and then he opens up a drawer nearby, near him, near him and uh, there's a, a hockey mask and a knife for some reason is in his room. Why that wouldn't be in like, the evidence for the police? I don't know, but that's in his room, and then he, uh, we see Pam is walking down towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, Tommy's room, and there's a glass shattering. She goes in, and she sees the windows broken, and then the door closes and we see Tommy wearing the hockey mask and he has a knife and he holds it up like this and then the movie ends. And in the sixth film, yeah, it's assumed that didn't, you know, that whole thing was diffused very quickly and, uh, yeah, that he did not kill Pam. It's never said, but that's what seems to be the consensus from those who have made or were involved with that film. 
or at the very least worth of six. Like, it didn't happen. Like, she didn't get killed. He didn't kill her. Um, so, yeah, it's, that's interesting for sure. Um, yeah, there are some inter there's some things going on that the kill some of the kills are really interesting. Um, you know, girls naked after having sex gets like uh, clippers, like uh, shears, uh, uh, into her eyes, and <laughs> so that's really a, a brutal death, and then boyfriend who comes back and sees her dead, he backs up to a tree and gets like a belt around his eyes and then it's being twisted with like a big branch of sorts and it just goes into his head and that's real brutal. So there's some uh, interesting kills that happen in this film. Um, you know, there's a lot of kills here. Um, but again, unfortunately, we don't really know a whole lot of the, the characters, so to some it might be hard to care all that much about, you know, some of the deaths, um, such as myself, but that's me, um, everybody is different, obviously, um, when it comes to, you know, nudity, there's quite a bit in this film, so with, you know, that's a thing with horror films and you, and, you know, that's, uh, no problem there, uh, Got that covered quite a bit. Um, and so, yeah, that's really um, it. It's really all I got to say um, with this film. Not my favorite. I think it's one of the weakest films of this series. But there are interesting ideas. There were performances, characters I liked. I think they were interesting um, uh, for a new beginning. It didn't really go anywhere, because the next film, Jason Voorhees is back from the dead. So, yeah. And also another thing, with this, uh, doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, uh, it doesn't appear to be, uh, J John Shepard at all, or Tommy Jarvis. Or the actor who played Roy, so I, uh, don't know who that is, but, well, well, perhaps we're not supposed to know, it's just like a poster, and, uh, yeah, um, and that's really it, uh, what do you think of this film, do you enjoy this movie, do you dislike this movie, is it somewhere in the middle for you, does it have, like, good stuff and some not good stuff? Like that stuff, or whatever. Um, yeah, I could have gone on longer, but I, you know, with after the last one, I kind of wanted to make these uh, shorter, if you know what I mean. You know, I don't want them to go too long. Um, so, that, yeah, there you go. Those are my thoughts on part five. Maybe my uh, thoughts could be a bit better as time goes on, who knows. But this is my thoughts on the film right now. And, uh, yeah, I hope all of you are having a great day. Hope you'll have a great weekend and a great week. And I'll see you all next time.